Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Um, I've got a custom build here today and it apparently has no post on it. So we're going to investigate this, see if we can find out why it's not running. Uh, this is a H97 system, so it's 4th gen Intel. Um, so we're going to find DDR3 in this. Um, we've got a Sapphire VaporX in there, so I'm guessing that's a, um, a 290 or something like that. HD 290X, maybe? Yes, it's a 290X 4 gig. Um, and a 750 watt power supply, probably 8 or 16 gigs of RAM. Any SSD? Yeah, there's an SSD in there as well. So still a nice gaming system. Um, so let's just turn this on and see what it does, first of all. So power on. I haven't touched this yet at all, so I'm going in blind. Let's see what happens. All right. We have fan spin, lights and camera. Looks like we have no post though, which is exactly what we were expecting. Um, looks like it's doing nothing. Do we have a beep speaker plugged into this? We don't. We do have a diagnostic LED at the graphics card though. Let's go in for a closer look. So you can see there's an LED shining through the fins of the graphics card heatsink there. That LED is actually at the PCI Express 16 slot. It's very difficult to see from the outside, but it's next to the PCI Express 16 slot, and um, that is on, which suggests that we're stuck on VGA. Uh, now, additionally, I've also noticed that this guy isn't plugged in properly. So I'm really hoping that that's not our problem. I'll be very annoyed if I just set all of this up for filming and it's just a loose PCI Express power cable. I will be furious. However, let's find out. So I'm going to turn that off. Let's just click that guy into place. I'll try that again. If that doesn't work, we'll take the graphics card out and actually have a closer look. Power on. Same deal, still have that VGA light on. That might just be on to indicate that there is a graphics card plugged in though. That's the problem with some of these status LEDs is unless you already know what they do, they can be a bit difficult to interpret. Nope, let's go straight to onboard graphics. Luckily, because this is Intel, we have onboard graphics, so we can just pull out the graphics card and plug directly into the motherboard. Um, if we were on AMD, we'd have to plug in something else. Oh, the big boy, these cards. Huge triple slot cooler. This thing would have been enormous for its time. Very fancy backplate as well. Are those cut-throughs for the cooling there? That's a very elaborate heatsink system. It looks like they have a heatsink on the VRMs in there that has holes cut through the board, so the heatsink pokes through the board. Hmm. Not going to comment on how effective that might be without having a closer look at it, but it's certainly interesting. I'll give them that. Uh, okay. Oh, I tell you what. I think those LEDs were from the BIOS chips here. That's interesting. It's a Fatality brand motherboard. Remember when Fatality was relevant? Is he still relevant? I don't know. Either way, let's turn this thing back on. So we can now see that LED is coming off of the BIOS A1 chip. So presumably that's just the BIOS select. So that was probably nothing. We'll wait and see if we get any post out of this. If not, I'm going to go straight in with a BIOS reset and just see if it's that simple. 
We still appear to have nothing, so we'll do a BIOS reset on this. So let's turn it off. And I'm going to go clear CMOS. And I move that jumper over to there. Um, so we'll start with the jumper. I could also pop out the CMOS battery, um, which I'm also a big fan of. But we'll start with the with the jumper first. Theoretically, it shouldn't matter. So pop the battery out, change the jumper, whatever you want. Now, so we've got a dual BIOS in the, on this motherboard, which is fairly uncommon for... Um, uh, uh, oh, it's an ASRock. I had it in my head that it was a uh, Asus. Uh, but yeah, this selector here will... If we switch that over to the other BIOS, to the other setting, that will give us the other BIOS. So if we have a corrupted BIOS, we should theoretically be able to switch to the backup BIOS. Um, these BIOS chips are also socketed, which is great, because that makes them really easy to reprogram if we've got to do that as well. Um, right, that should be long enough. Let's change that back. Power on. And power. Still nothing. Okay. Let's try switching BIOSes. Then we're going to start swapping out memory and stuff like that, I think. Power off. So I've moved this jumper over to the other side, which should select the backup BIOS. So let's turn on and see if it boots from that. There you go. So as you can see, the light has moved across now. So the BIOS select has worked. Still nothing. Okay. Power off. So we'll switch back to main BIOS just so we can keep testing on the same circumstances. I need a beep speaker. I'm going to go find one. I'm going to go one beep speaker. Uh, where does this plug in? Right, let's power it up with beep speaker plugged in and see if we're getting any BIOS beep codes. Oh, there we go. All right, that's three beep. This is going to be memory. Beep codes aren't always memory, but most of the time they're memory. So uh, let's um, pop out the memory modules. Corsair XMS3. It's pretty dusty in there. I wonder if this thing is just a dust problem. But first I'm just going to drop in this known good memory module. This has come out of a board that I know runs. So let's pop that guy in there. Power on at the back. Power button. No beeps. No beeps. I'm going to go and make a copy while I wait for that, just to see if it ram trains or something. Okay, so it didn't beep, but it hasn't posted either. So it's a bit odd. <clears throat> I'm going to lob a tester graphics card in there and just try the output from there. Just in case we're trying to default to a graphics card or something like that. Shouldn't be necessary, but yeah, not the output I was expecting just then. Ah, and now we're getting beep codes again. Right. Okay, we're getting um, we're getting two sequences of three short beeps. It's going one, two, three, one, two, three, then a long pause. Let's find out what that beep code actually means. Um, yeah, let's find out what that beep code means. Although interestingly, this person is describing exactly the same issue. Keep getting six short beeps.
This is why I don't like beep codes. It's really hard to find references for them. Hmm. Okay. Okay, uh, let's change gears back into some blind attempts. What do I get if I run no memory? Okay, three long beat. Right, so there's definitely a distinction between no memory and one memory stick in. So we've got probably got three short beeps in that case. Right, I've no idea what those uh, what that three short beeps or six short beeps, whichever it is, is trying to indicate. So um, I'm going to start going for just swap out parts until it works. Um, which is not the most technical way of diagnostics, but it's absolutely effective. Um, so I'm going to get this thing laid down flat, and we can start just plugging plugging different stuff in until it works, and let's see what happens. So let's start with a different power supply. This is a real shot in the dark at this point. Um, this doesn't feel like a power supply issue to me. Um, I don't. I haven't seen. Um, bad power supply causing um, uh, BIOS beep codes. So yeah, as I say, real shot in the dark, but we'll try it anyway, because you never know. And once we've tried it, we can essentially eliminate it from the list. That should do. Power on, and power on. Lots of beeps. Oh, bloody hell. I think singing a whole tune. Right, yeah, okay. Uh, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly just try swapping this memory module up to a different slot. Okay, so one more try just with the memory in a different slot because we haven't tried that yet. I'm not expecting this to make a difference. No, never mind. Oh, it power cycled that time. Okay, so there's nothing to do with the power supply. So let's get it back onto its original power supply. So that means we can just get this thing out of the way and simplify. And I'll move the memory back to the correct slot again. Whoops. I could put in the original memory as well, actually. Right, I think I'm going to check the CPU. And then I might go and just carry on doing some more Google searching to see if I can get an actual list of BIOS beep codes because I've done a couple of Google searches and I keep just coming across um, like just small short tables that have got like two or three codes on them but not an actual proper list especially including the codes that we're getting. All right that's all in. Um, let's just try it one more time on the existing board. Not expecting it to work, but we'll try just in case. No. So that was two beeps that time. These beep codes have a mind of their own. I don't like the way we're getting, we seem to be getting something different like every time. All right, let's uh, inspect the CPU. It's 
Don't need enough dust on this thing. That's some funky looking thermal paste. It's still goopy, so I think it's doing its job. It's just looks like tar. Hmm. Um, right, okay, let's clean that up. I'm going to pull out the CPU and I might drop in a different one because I just so happen to have another fourth gen um, Intel CPU on hand. So I can very easily just drop something else in there. All right, we've got no bent pins. A little bit of thermal paste under the CPU, although that might have just jumped on there when I just pulled that out. You never know. What is this? It's a 4790K. I'll put that back in. And we'll just spin that up again, having reseated it, and just see if that makes any change at all. If not, I'll drop in another CPU. I'm not expecting it to be that, because remember the mantra, kids, it's never the CPU. Uh, let's get a testing cooler. There we go. I like to use this cooler because it's very easy to just perch it on top of the CPU without any mounting hardware. So it makes it very nice and it makes it very quick and easy just to take pull on and off. Obviously, you need hold down pressure to get a proper mount on a CPU, but it's not going to overheat this way, which is the important thing. Two beeps. No, oh, all right then. I'm gonna see if I can find out what two beeps is. Like, give me something, Google. You know, this is what I hate about working with beep codes. Look at this I'm on Tom's Hardware here. H97 anniversary, so you know, similar motherboard, not the same one, but whatever. Uh, people are saying memory. Yeah, as I say, always going to be the case. Five beeps is the AMI code for processor failure. Okay. Five beeps is related to graphics. Which is it? Ugh. Uh, okay, right. While we're working on the CPU, let's drop a different CPU in there. Uh, I would like to pull the CMOS battery out just to be sure that I'm not getting pumped. But I'm already here, I've already got access to the CPU, and I've got another CPU literally within arm's reach. Normally just happening to have another 4th gen Intel CPU right in arm's reach is not something I would consider normal. However, as luck would have it, I happen to have one within arm's reach. So let's put that in there. This is a, uh, a 4690K, so it's the i5 equivalent. Power on, power on. Two beeps. Never the CPU. on a desktop motherboard. Fine. Okay, I'm gonna pop out that BIOS battery. Should have done this at the start. I don't trust reset jumpers. Uh, let's leave that for a bit.
try that. Battery in. Uh, power on the back. Now we're back to three beeps. This thing has a mind of its own. What if I reset now? Just hit the reset button. Now we're back to two beeps. Just going to disconnect everything else. All these SATA cables and stuff. Cannot possibly imagine that they are causing a problem, but I feel like I'm getting punked by something here. Front USB, get rid of it. So all we've got is front panel headers. That should do it. And I'm just going to back up to slot one as well. Fairly certain that we want to be in slot two and four, counting back from the CPU. But we'll just try it somewhere else. Just fish for a different reaction here. A million beeps. Lots of beeps. And it power cycled. And now we're back to six beeps and power cycle. This is a very aggravating situation. So I'm 99% certain that this is a motherboard issue now. Um, I can lob all of the hardware onto another motherboard and there's not a doubt in my mind it'll work. I might do that just to confirm that the customer's CPU, RAM and graphics card all works. Because uh, then at that point we can say, right, okay, it's a faulty motherboard. Let's go from there. A little bit irks that we're hung up on these beat codes, especially because I know that there's going to be someone in the comments down below going, oh, here's a full list of beat codes for that particular BIOS that I just couldn't find in 10 seconds of Googling. Um, although, actually, if someone did actually post those, that would be very helpful. Then I'd know in the future. Um, but then, on the other hand, when I was setting up this video, I was kind of hoping we'd get an interesting one. The reason why we haven't had a good no post video in a while is um, a lot of the time when I come across no posts, it's a case of um, the the RAM wasn't in properly or it was just a bad RAM module and, you know, like, or I, I did a BIOS reset, which the first thing I tried fixed it and it was literally a two minute video kind of thing. Uh, whereas we've actually got a bit of a challenge on, on our hands here, apparently. Either that, or I'm just doing it the hard way, which is making it more challenging. Uh, let's see. Um, let's leave all of that there now. And let's bring in a different MOBO. <sighs> now for something smaller. <laughs> Right, let's drop in the customer's CPU. And I'm going to drop in their RAM as well. So this motherboard has actually just come out of a friend's PC that I upgraded at the weekend. It's um, not 100% trusted. However, it will work enough for post-testing, which is the, uh, the important factor. Uh, let's grab the Antec again. 
I'd love to power it from the customer's power supply, but that's a bit of a ball ache. However, we've already done a power supply test. We've zero reason to believe that power supply might be involved in this. So it's completely fine for me to just use another random power supply and this still be a valid test. Right, RAM, CPU, power supply. Let's drop their graphics card on there as well, just so we know that that works. Oof, just about the hits. There are complications with this graphics card that might punk me um, because it has, it's a dual BIOS graphics card and in all likelihood, one of the BIOSes is UEFI and the other one is uh, Legacy. Um, and I've already accidentally pushed that button once, so I've no idea which it was on. And I've no idea which we need it to be on for the customer's motherboard. It should be UEFI. Either way, we'll try it on both and we'll make sure it works on both. Right, pop up this graphics card with something. There we go. This is a really dumb setup. But I'll be happier seeing all of this work just so I can uh, just so I can say, awesome, this is a motherboard problem. And move on to motherboard diagnostics. CPU fan. That'll do. Okay. Power on, power on, power on. Pow. I haven't got a beep speaker plugged into this, but theoretically, there's no reason why this won't work. All right, we have a post. So we know the CPU works, the memory works, and the graphics card works. Now let's roll back to the customer's motherboard again and work from there. I don't think I'm doing this in the most efficient manner. However, discovery videos. Not necessarily about doing it the, the first time. Not about, it's not necessarily about doing everything in the perfect order. It's just simply about trying different things and showing people what kind of things you could try. Or for some people who are watching these videos with no intention of ever trying to fix anything themselves and just want to see me get to an answer. Hi, all of y'all. Okay, we're all set again. Let's give it the beans and see what we get. Power. Ah, beep speaker. Beep speaker. All right, we're back to six beeps. I'll refresh the capture card. No output, okay. And now we're back to just a whole series of beats. Okay. Fine. Okay, I'm going to reflash one of these BIOS chips. We've already tried switching out to... I'll tell you what we haven't tried, actually. Just wait for the uh, 5BSB to die. We haven't tried resetting the other um, BIOS chip. So... I'm going to try switching BIOSes and then doing a clear CMOS. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's just try that. Backup BIOS, clear CMOS. I'm assuming that if you remove the BIOS battery, it's going to reset both chips, but who knows? I have no idea. The problem with backup BIOS systems is that um, backup BIOSes... It's ne there's never been a standardized system for this. So different brands of motherboard with backup BIOS systems behave differently. 
and it's a case of if you just have if you haven't seen all of them then you don't know how it's going to behave so yeah let's see what that does i don't think this is going to work and then what i think i'm going to do next is pull out the main bios chip stick it into a reprogrammer and we're going to program it up to the latest bios for this motherboard and we'll see what that achieves if anything if that doesn't work i think i might just declare dead motherboard I think I might have a spare uh, Z97 motherboard that we could put into this. Not the one that I just used, but another one somewhere, an ATX board. Let's try that. Power. Power. Backup BIOS selected. Ah, and we're posting. There it is. Ah, all right. So, backup BIOS works, but we needed to do a clear CMOS on it as well. That's what we missed. There we go. It's always something simple. So, yay me. I was actually bang on the money with the first, you know, I, the first thing I did was go in looking at the BIOS. Uh, I just wasn't quite there, and we just did all of that song and dance, checking other components, and it's actually a BIOS issue. However, yes, we have a diagnosis. Cool. All right, so let's power that off now, and let's switch back to the main BIOS and see if it posts again. I'm going to be really annoyed if it posts on the main BIOS. So I haven't, changed, haven't turned it off at the back. We just switched BIOS chips. Yeah, and we're screwed again. All right, that's enough. We get it. Okay, so now the question is... So theoretically, I could... We could leave it on the backup BIOS, um, or we could swap the chips over, but we still have one bad chip. Um, so... I'm not sure how you go about updating the backup BIOS on this thing. Um, let's switch out to let's switch out to the backup BIOS, and then oh, I'm going to wait for this light to go out. We'll switch out to the backup BIOS, then we'll go into the BIOS setup and we'll see what options it gives me because I like we've got a, a BIOS select jumper, but I don't know if I can. Like, if this was a graphics card, what you'd do is you'd select your good BIOS, boot into Windows, then on the graphics card you would switch to the bad BIOS while you're running, and then flash the BIOS, because you only need the BIOS at the point of startup. Once you're into Windows, you don't need it. Um, and so that allows you to then flash the bad BIOS on the card. No idea how it works on a motherboard. Um, for the Gigabyte dual back, uh, for the Gigabyte dual BIOS system, bloody hell, this thing is still on. Die! For the Gigabyte dual BIOS system, there's actually a specific option to back up, to update the backup BIOS. Uh, however, for ASRock, no idea at all. I hate this Antec power supply sometimes. The 5 BSB rail, there we go, it's finally died. The 5 BSB rail just goes on forever. It's got capacitors the size of a small star on it. There we go. Right. Backup BIOS selected. Power up. Let's go into BIOS and see what we've actually got. Okay. Dell for setup. So firstly, we're on BIOS version 1.1, which is what's written on the chip. So this thing has never, ever had a BIOS update before. Um... Let's see, where is full HD UEFI auto? Uh, yeah, okay. Current resolution is low because we're on... Yeah, fine, okay. Um, here we go, UEFI update utility instant flash, secure backup UEFI B to A. Here we go. So yes, I want to duplicate 
BIOS version B to A. Duplication process will start shortly after the system reboots. OK. Neat. OK, so theoretically, I assume this is now going to copy the backup to the main. Then after that, we'll update the main and we'll leave version 1.1 on the backup as just a known good. It's selected the main BIOS again while we're on backup select. So it's automatically overridden that. Cool. This might be more interesting. Well, I say this might be more interesting to know if it weren't the fact that this is an obsolete motherboard anyway. But I don't know. This kind of stuff is fun. I like this. While that does that, I'm going to look up an actual BIOS update download because we're still going to update this anyway. Damn, this thing got an update in 2018. Programming success, press enter to reboot system. OK. So that is rebooting. It switched back to the backup BIOS. Cool. Right, now I'm going to turn that off. And we'll switch back to main BIOS. Main BIOS selected. Power on. So it looks like we're good. However, one more thing that we have to consider the possibility of is that the BIOS chip is faulty, which is, you know, it might just be a, it, it looks like it just corrupted, but it might also be a faulty chip which is also why I want to do an update and stuff like that. I want to hammer the chip and make sure that the chip is physically OK. So from the uh, ASRock website here, here's the web page for this board. I've just gone down to support and BIOS, and there's our 2018 BIOS there. I've just downloaded this, and I've put it onto a flash drive that is FAT32 formatted. So I'll just unplug that and plug it into the motherboard now. And we'll go over to Tools, Instant Flash. And it has found our BIOS update file on the flash drive. So you can see we're going up to version P2.6. Cool, update. Do you want to update UEFI to that? Yes. And it's doing an Intel ME update as well. Can anyone confirm to me in the comments what Intel ME actually does? Because I've heard a lot of mixed I've I've heard lots of mixed opinions on when you should and should not update it. I've never taken any notice. If it doesn't update, it doesn't update. I don't really pay it any mind. But I'd be very interested to know what it actually does and why some people are so squicky about updating it. Processing crashless feature. All right. I'm going to leave this to run. Programming success. Press enter to reboot system. So reboot, we should hit BIOS and see that we're on the new version. Might take slightly longer this time after a reboot. Uh, there's the old UEFI video issues kicking in. There we go, and I just deleted into BIOS, and that seems to be working now. There we go. Good. All right, so we're now on version P2.6. So I could now switch to the backup BIOS and update that one as well. Um, but I'm going to leave that on the Stone Age BIOS version because that Stone Age BIOS works, and it works with the CPU that's in there. Um, so it just means that if there's any problems with the new BIOS or if anything screws up, we know that we can actually recover from that old BIOS. Um, there's no real, like, if we knew that there was a compatibility problem on the old version of the BIOS with some hardware that was in here, or if this motherboard had required a BIOS update for CPU compatibility, as would be the case with some AMD systems, 
then I would want to say, right, we want to make sure that the backup BIOS is actually on a useful version. However, version 1.1, despite being Stone Age, does work on this board. So I'm going to leave the backup BIOS alone because it works. We've just proven that it works. So past that, we can reassemble this now. So just one final thing before we get to the reassembly. If the backup BIOS had also been corrupted, uh, we would have been in a situation where we could not recover the board on its own. And what we'd need to do is pop one of these chips out and reprogram it manually, which is really easy to do on these old boards where we had socketed chips. Motherboard manufacturers, please give us socketed chips again because it just means that the average person has half a chance of being able to reprogram BIOSes without needing soldering equipment. But what we do is we just pop this chip out, just get some tweezers underneath that. Uh, get out. Coming from the other side. There we go. So there's our BIOS chip. We just take that off the board. And then what we could do this is a, uh, a CH341A programmer, and these things are like $5, $10 tops. They're really cheap. Just plugs into the side of your laptop or another computer, download the software for it for free, and what we do is we just, ah, we drop the BIOS chip. And what we do, we put the BIOS chip in that way round, so with the notch at the back, we put that in like that, plug that into our computer, and bam, we can now reprogram the BIOS chip. And once that's done, we just pop that back in the board, and we're laughing. So that would be a very easy way of reprogramming the BIOS chip on your motherboard if you're in a zero recovery situation. There we go, down to the stops. Remember, you don't have to grunge these things up tight. These screws, they're not doing the work. Those springs, those are what are doing the work. That's why you don't need your, that's why you don't need these things to be tight. Making these screws tighter doesn't make it hold down any harder. You just take them down to the stops so the springs are compressed and it's the springs that are providing your tension. I have to nag because it's very often that I encounter these things where someone has gone, Argh! with the screwdriver to get as tight as possible and it's like it's, it's not doing anything there we go fan mounted blowing through right i've given the case a blowout there's still dust on here but i've uh, i've knocked everything out that will come off with the air compressor um this is not a refurbishment job this is diagnostic so i'm not going to sterilize the thing um, but yeah, we've cleared out all the filters as well, including the power supply filter, which was chocked full of dust. Everyone yells at me for pointing, putting the power supply in with the fan side pointing up, but no one yells at people for not cleaning out their bottom filter. All uh, right. Le motherboard. <laughs> Feed this in, get it under all the cables. Just supporting the motherboard when we plug in these big heavy connectors just so we don't bend it and snap it. Not something I've ever seen happen, but I live in fear of it. Right. Graphics card. Bam. Absolute unit, this thing. Right, we are all hooked up. Let's plug it in, and this thing should boot to Windows now. Power at the back, power at the front. There we go, we've booted to Windows and Windows updates. Uh, right, okay, so I'll probably give this thing a quick once over service just to make sure it doesn't fall over. Um, however, I'm assuming that we're all good to go now. Um, so. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, that was a good one, that one. Um, took a little bit longer than we needed to just because I got sidetracked testing other components that weren't faulty. Um, that was a, a very funky slew of beep codes we were getting, though, and possibly just a, uh, a, a cautionary tale that beep codes are not gospel. 
Uh, as with a lot of diagnostic cues that you get from computers, take everything with a pinch of salt. Every beep code you get, every error message you have, that's not a diagnosis, that's information. And you, you look at all of that information and you use that to draw a conclusion. So thanks a lot for watching, everyone. As always, my support links are down below or stick around for the end card for my Patreon, my Discord, my Instagram, and whatever else is down there. I forget these days. Uh, see you next time. Bye for now. They're phase activity LEDs. They show you which V-Core phases are running on the graphics card. That's cool. I These things used to... Phase activity LEDs briefly were all the rage on MSI motherboards. Never seen them on a graphics card before. That is the coolest thing ever. I love it.